I'm running down here to mine. I'm up here since one and a half year now, and that's basically the end of a long journey. Uh, I'm mining since 2010, and in the beginning, as most of you know, that was pretty easy. Then the machines got bigger, I put them downstairs in our building. <laughs> it took me almost two years to find this, this place here. One guy I know knew somebody from Oxbow, and this guy from Oxbow told me I should contact somebody up here, and I contacted Hans Baker, who's sitting there. <laughs> and now that's the amazing part of the story, where while I sometimes was uh, looking for weeks to talk to somebody, I called Hans Peter, we met. And when do you need it? I said, yesterday. I said, okay, what about two weeks? And within two weeks, it was possible to move up here. All the electricity was installed. People were very supportive. There were, of course, a couple of hiccups, like telling all the people what Bitcoin is. This is nerd money. It can't possibly work. And as you will see later, we will go down later, it's not a mine as big as you know it from China. When Satoshi Nakamoto invented Bitcoin and uh, announced it on the crypto uh, mailing list, everyone around him responded in pretty much the same way. The circle of advocates, which is now numbering in the millions, is consists entirely of people who started out as very strong skeptics. The difference is, the first time I saw it, that was my reaction. The second time I read the paper and understood that this was not a currency, it was a decentralized network model. Uh, for financial security and trust, which allows currency, but also allows many other things. We're now standing on the precipice of a global revolution of economics, and politics, and government. Welcome to the blockchain. I don't know if all the skeptics become advocates over time, but I do see that most people who look at Bitcoin carefully very quickly understand that there's a lot more than meets the eye to this. Bitcoin mining technology has progressed very rapidly, and even though these miners are barely two years old, they are already outdated. In a recent Q&A session in Prague, Andreas Antonopoulos had this to say. We've now achieved a, a situation in mining where we've seen from the CPU to the GPU to the FPGA to the ASIC increases of 100 or 1,000 fold performance increases until we accelerated straight into Moore's law. And that's a wall, because 16 nanometers, done. Okay, now where do we go? Now we slow down to... 2x increases every 18 months, and everyone can get the same chip, and there's no advantage in pre-ordering, and you no longer have to switch chips every three to six months. So therefore, capital connections to silicon fabrication, centralization of purchasing no longer matter. And this has started happening at the beginning of this year, and we will go into the halvening with a situation where there will be the halves and the half-nots those who have 16 nanometer and those who don't and those who do not have 16 nanometer will find themselves unprofitable very quickly with this in mind it is not surprising that Guido Rodolfi has added ethereum to the mix which can be mined with off the shelf graphic cards while also waiting for new bitcoin mining hardware to arrive the ending with the blockchain bitcoin is just the beginning welcome to the blockchain Keep 
building, building, building.